review for unit one about the math involved in chemistry. So as you can see, we've got about 11 different objectives here, different things that you should be aware of. So let me just real quickly go through them and then we'll get to the problems. So number one says explain the three different temperature scales and be able to convert from one to the other. Obviously the three different temperature scales are Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Those two equations for converting Kel Kelvin to Celsius and Fahrenheit to Celsius are both given on the equation sheet. Okay, number two, use the density equations to solve for any of the three variables. Remember that when you get your test, you should, again, just right away make that little triangle so you remember how to solve for density, how to solve for mass, and how to solve for volume. Number three, solve problems using dimensional analysis. Remember, dimensional analysis is just a fancy word for converting. So you will have to do some on your test with single steps and various steps, obviously using your units, real important there, to cancel out uh, one thing or another. Number four, determine when a measurement is accurate, precise, or both. Remember, accuracy is how close you are to the true value or the actual value. Precise is how close you are, how close the values are to each other, not necessarily how close they are to the true or actual value. Okay, number five, calculate the percent error. Again, that formula will be given on the equation sheet. Number six, use significant figures. Anytime that you are um, doing a problem, your answer should have the correct number of significant figures. Uh, you will be marked off on the test for that if you do not. Um, also, if I give you a number, you need to be able to tell me this number has four, six, whatever significant figures. When you do have to, when you use significant figures in any of your calculations, you do need to do number seven as well. You do need, need to know how to round that number correctly, where sometimes you have to add some zeros at the end. And then number eight, obviously we already talked about that, very similar uh, here. Use the correct number of significant figures when solving a problem. Nine and ten kind of go together. If I give you something in standard form, you need to be able to put it into scientific notation. So standard form is just how we write a normal, regular old number. But if you're, if you're given a number in scientific notation, you also need to be able to go backwards and put it into standard form. And then remember that number 11, perform mathematical calculations involving scientific notation. Remember that when you're using a calculator, it's always a good idea, especially when you're dividing in scientific notation, uh, to put that second number in to it, put that number in parentheses. So if you're taking 7.2 times 10 to the minus fifth divided by 4.3 times 10 to the minus fifth, uh, remember that and, and on your calculator, you're going to hit 7.2. And then again, depending on the calculator you have, you might have the double E button. You might have the EXP button. The, the newer yellow, yellow calculator, I think, have the times 10 to the N button. And then you just hit minus negative 5 after that. So 7.2, hit one of those buttons, whichever one you have, and then negative 5. And then divided by, now remember here, here's you got to put those parentheses in there, 4.3. And then, again, that button here again. And then negative 5. And then you, you will get the correct answer after you close those parentheses. Okay. So let's look at the sample questions here. Question number one says a cube of metal 1.50 centimeters to a side has a mass of 76.31 grams. What's its density? So right away you see a cube. Each side is 1.500 centimeters. So obviously to find the density, we know the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. And in this case, we know the mass. They give that to us, but they don't give us the volume. They just give us the length of a side. And we do know that a cube, therefore, if, it's a, if it is a cube, all the sides are equal to each other. So to find that volume that we need, we do have to take length, length times width times height. So we're going to take 1.500 centimeters, and we're basically going to cube it. We're going to times it by itself three times. So here's where you're going to need a calculator. Grab mine here real quick. So 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5 equals 3.375 cubic centimeters. 
And remember, we talked about this in class, that a cubic centimeter is nothing more than a milliliter. So when I ask you, what's its density in grams per milliliter here? Remember, those are milliliters. Because now that we have the volume, now we can do this equation right here, where we're going to take the mass, 76.31 grams, and we're going to divide by 3.375. Again, I'm just going to write milliliters because I want you to know that you can do that. If it's centimeters cubed, you can just write milliliters and it's the same thing. So 76.31 divided by 3.375. Uh, four significant figures. Four significant figures. Everything's got four, so my answer needs to also have four. So I get an answer of 22.61. And that, again, is grams per milliliter. Now, again, on a test, how might I score this problem? Just so you're very well aware of how I'm going to grade this. I'm probably going to give you probably three points for getting the correct volume. And then another three points for setting this problem up correctly. Maybe two points for the correct answer. And then one point for the correct unit. Uh, or maybe maybe three points here and then one point for the unit, something, something like that. It's probably going to add up to around 10 points. But you'll notice that a lot of the points are coming from the work that you do, not necessarily the answer. Okay, number two, an experiment requires 45 grams of a liquid whose density is 1.114 grams per milliliter. What volume should be used? So once again, let's come back up here. Here's my triangle. So the question is asking for volume. So I'm going to cross out volume or put my finger over volume. And here's my formula. It's mass over density. So volume equals mass over density. The mass is 45.0 grams. The density, they tell us, is 1.114 grams per milliliter. I simply divide those numbers, 45 divided by 1.114 and I get an answer of three significant figures, four significant figures. My answer is only going to have three significant figures. The grams cancel. Remember, those milliliters come back up top, so it is 40.4 milliliters. Okay, question number three. Convert the following numbers from or to scientific notation. So if it's in scientific notation, like this one and this one, uh, they want us to put it into standard form. Uh, letters B and C that are in standard form, they want us to put into scientific notation. So letter A, I'm going to put that into standard form. So I'm going to take that decimal point, and because it's a negative 5, I'm going to move that decimal point 5 spaces to the left. So 2.54, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I put the decimal point there. Every space that's empty, I put a zero in there. Okay, and now make sure that you erase, you get rid of, sorry, get rid of that decimal point that was right there. Don't leave it there. You can't have a number with two decimal points in it. Okay, so it's just point zero 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 two five four. Okay, letter B, we know that this has to be a number between 1 and 10. So 6.234 times, and notice that I keep every number that is significant. If you have a significant figure, you keep it. All these zeros here, none of these zeros count. Those are trailing zeros. None of those zeros count. Now I just have to determine 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces. I had to move that to get it right in between the 6 and the 2. So that's 6.234 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, letter C, it's going to be 1, because remember, it has to be between 1 and 10. 1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. And again, it's a small number, so it has to be a negative 3. So 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd in scientific notation. Okay, and then our last one, putting that scientific notation number back into standard notation. 9.379, and with an 8 there, it means I'm going to move this decimal point 8 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again, for every space, I'm going to put some zeros in there. 
And at the very end, I'm going to make sure I erase that decimal point, not the 9 or the 3. Oops. Put the 3 and the 9 back. But the decimal point, even though we don't write it, is way down here at the end. Uh, and we're going to leave it exactly how we have it written there. Okay, question number four. Give one similarity, one difference between accuracy and precision. Uh, accu accuracy and precision both deal with how close you are to something. So they both deal with how close you are to something, to whatever. Okay, but accuracy is how close you are to the actual value, where precision is how close the values are to each other. Okay, so they both deal with how close you are to things, but accuracy is how close you are to the actual value. Preci precision is how close the data points are to each other. Okay, number five, significant figures. How many significant figures are in the following numbers? So on letter A, these are what we call leading zeros. Leading zeros are not significant but every other zero is in this case. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This has six significant figures. Okay, letter B, these are what we call trailing zeros. They're at the end of a number with no decimal point. Okay, that's not these zeros. Okay, those have a decimal point. That's not that zero. That has a decimal point. If there's a trailing zero, so zeros at the end of the number and there's no decimal point, then they are not significant. So this one only has three. Okay, letter C has no leading zeros and no trailing zeros. So therefore, they all are significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All ten of those are significant. Letter D, you've got some leading zeros, so none of those count. The negative sign has nothing to do with it. But then after those leading zeros, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, that zero does count because it's not these zeros. There is a decimal point there. So that zero does have to count. So there are seven. Okay. And then, yes, these are trailing zeros, but there is a decimal point there, which means they all count. So this one has six. So again, just a quick reminder, only leading zeros when there's that when it's point zero something those zeros don't count and if it's a whole number with zeros at the end like letter b with no decimal point then those zeros do not count okay so if we let me erase everything here if we underline the zeros that don't count it's just those zeros those zeros those zeros see how it's either leading zeros or trailing zeros with no decimal point. Other than that, they all count. Okay, question number six, convert the following numbers, 845 milliliters to quarts. So if I have 845 milliliters, I have to do a conversion where I'm gonna put milliliters on the bottom. So looking at my three conversions that I'm given, this one right here has milliliters, so I'm gonna put a thousand milliliters on the bottom, one liter on the top, milliliters cancel. And remember, I'm going to keep going until I get to quarts. So now I've got liters on the top, and that conversion has now been used. So now I'm going to put 3.7854 liters on the bottom so that my liters will cancel. One gallon on the top, liters are gone. That equation's used. And then my final step, I've got gallons on the top. So one gallon on the bottom, four quarts on the top, gallons cancel. And I'm done. Now I've converted to quarts. Now I just need to do the calculator part. And again, notice the way that I do that 845 divided by 1,000 divided by 3.7854 times 4 is point again three significant figures here I'm gonna round that to point eight nine three and that is quartz and that's my final answer for that one 
Okay, letter B, 85 kilometers to inches. So very similar to the last one. Just instead of volume, now it's distance. So I have kilometers that I'm starting with. So my first conversion here, one kilometer on the bottom, a thousand meters on the top, kilometers cancel. And now I've got meters. So here's, and that conversion's gone. My next conversion here, one meter on the bottom, 100 centimeters on the top, meters cancel. And now it looks like my last step, I've got centimeters on the top, so centimeters go on the bottom, 2.54 centimeters, one inch, centimeters cancel, and we're done. We've canceled everything. All we have left is inches, that's what they're asking us for. So we're going to take 85, we're going to multiply by 1,000, we're going to multiply by 100, and then we're going to divide by 2.54. Ugh, that's a big number. Okay, but I only have two significant figures, so this would be a good time to just put your answer in scientific notation. 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that is inches. If you wrote it as three, three, one, two, three, four, five, that's also acceptable. Uh, what is that? 3.3 .3 million, yeah, 3.3 .3 million inches in 85 kilometers. Okay, number seven, and again, either of those answers would be accepted on the test. I don't care if you put it in scientific notation or standard notation, uh, unless I specify one or the other. Okay, number seven. Perform the following conversions, 85 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. We know that the conversion, and again, this is given, Kelvin is the temperature in Celsius, plus 273. So 85 plus 273 equals 358 Kelvin. Okay, letter B, Kelvin back to Celsius. So in that case, here's our equation. To get to Celsius, we got to get Celsius by itself, so we're going to subtract 273. So 72 minus 273, I don't want to mess up here, is negative 201 degrees Celsius. That's pretty chilly. Okay, and then our last one, 45, negative 45 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, is going to look just like letter A, negative 45 plus 273, negative 45 plus 273 equals 228 Kelvin. And then we know the equation, again, this is given on the equation sheet, Fahrenheit equals 1.8 C plus 32. So we're going to take 1.8, we're going to multiply it by negative 45, and then we're going to add 32 to that, 1.8 times negative 45 plus 32 equals negative 49 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, oh, and that's actually pretty close. Negative 45, negative 49. Uh, they're, they're pretty close to each other there. Okay, uh, number eight, convert 45.2 grams per ounces to milliliters per kilogram using a density of 1.89 grams per milliliter. Make sure you have the correct number of figures in your answer, and there's a bunch of conversions there. So this is one of those tricky ones where we've got 45.2 grams on the top and ounces on the bottom. Now remember when you do a problem like this, you basically forget one while you do the other. So we're going to do grams first, and so ounces I'm not even going to consider. I'm going to pretend like the ounces for right now aren't even there. Okay, so I need to convert grams, and it shows me i got to convert grams to milliliters. So I'm looking down here. I see grams to pounds, and then grams to kilograms, but I don't see gram, I don't see milliliters down here at all. And again, that's where that density becomes really, really important. Because what I can do is now I can say, oh, wait a minute, this is grams, this is milliliters. The density is 1.89 grams per one milliliter. And so if I use that correctly, I'm gonna put 1.89 grams on the bottom, because that's what it is, and grams are gonna cancel in one milliliter. So just like that, we're done with that top part. 
in one step, we have converted our grams to milliliters using, again, the density. And that's given us our answer with the, uh, in terms of milliliters. Now, we forget about the grams part because we're already done with that part. And now we focus on the ounces part. So we need to convert ounces to kilograms. So now, oh, here's some conversions. We've got ounces on the bottom. So here we can see there are 16 ounces in one pound. Ounces way over there cancel. And then we've got pounds on the bottom. So here's our next conversion. One pound equals 453.59 grams. Done with that one, done with that one. Pounds have canceled. And then our last one is 1,000 grams on the top, so the grams will cancel over one kilogram. Now again, how do I know I've done this right? Because I've got, I've got milliliters on top and kilograms on the bottom. So from left to right, 45.2 divided by 1.89 times 16 divided by 453.59 times a thousand gives me an answer with three significant figures of 844 milliliters per kilogram okay and then our final one and that is your that's your final answer on that one last question here uh, calculate the percent error of the experiment. Remember, percent error, the easiest way to do it is take your two numbers and uh, take the big number minus the small number. So I'm going to take 7.86. I'm going to subtract 7.42 minus 7.42, and that equals, again, I'm subtracting here. So both of them have two digits after the decimal point. So so does my answer. And that is uh, what's going to go on the top. And then for our bottom part, so we subtract the big number minus the small number, and then we divide by the actual density or the actual value, whatever that happens to be. So the actual density, they tell us actual density is 7.86. And again, we could put the grams per cubic centimeter in there, but they're going to cancel anyway. And then we're going to multiply by 100. Remember, that's a conversion factor, no significant figures. Again, this, here's another problem where we're switching rules in the middle. We're going from subtraction to division. So be careful here because that number right here that you're dividing only has two significant figures, two sig figs there. So 0.44 divided by 7.86 equals, times 100 obviously, equals 5.59796, blah, blah, blah. But I can only have two significant figures in my answer. So 5.59 is going to round to 5.6%. And that is your final answer there.